Okay. All right, so uh, hi everyone. I'm Karin from Data Theorem and thank you so much for joining us today for this live demo series. Uh, so in this series, we present recent data breaches or hacks, how they're executed and what you can do to remedy this from happening in the future uh, to your business. And so today I'll actually be talking about SSRF attacks. Um, we'll discuss how an attacker recently uncovered a vulnerability in one of Azure's app service providers. And the app in question was actually a full stack Azure website on Linux. And it was using an open source SCM tool called Kudu Lite. Uh, as the engine for Git deployments. So the actor was able to access proprietary data on the server directly through the SSRF attack. And I'll talk a little bit more about what SSRF is and how it works. And, you know, we really see this as a function of recent code modernization initiatives as apps are becoming more full stack, you're writing more code in the cloud. Um, this really renders some of these older security practices obsolete. And so it's really important to employ a full stack application security solution uh, with hacking toolkit. So I'll talk about all of this, what it means um, before I go into that. So who's Data Theorem? Uh, we were founded in 2013 and we have headquarters in Palo Alto. And our exec team has over 15 years of security industry experience. We actually got the Cool Vendor 2020 award from Gartner this year. And these are some of the customers that we've had the privilege of working with. So as you can see in many different verticals. And so now I'm gonna dive into talking about this hack. Um, so what actually happened? So uh, this was, as I said earlier, it was a vulnerability that existed in the Azure app services and it specifically impacts Linux services. So um, this is where they're using Kudu Lite, which is the app service admin component for Linux. And they actually had no access checks employed. The researcher who found this, his name is Paul Litvak. And the way that Kudu Lite works is that it's hosted on the manager node of the service and the application is hosted on a separate node. And what happened was that the application node could send a request to the Kudu Lite API um, effectively accessing that manager node that has uh, all of the controls and all the permissions without having that access validation. So there was no auth authorization or authentication turned on in this situation, which is um, bad. And it's really what created that vulnerability that allowed the SSRF attack to succeed. And if you're not familiar with Azure App Services, um, it's basically an HTTP based service for hosting web applications. And so it is available as part of the Microsoft Azure cloud um, tool suite. And a lot of uh, customers are scaling their application, as I've said, and they're using AWS or Azure or GCP. And oftentimes they are using these Azure app services. So let's see here. And you know, this is really actually quite common having a vulnerability that opens the door to SSRF. Um, and I have two examples here. The example on the left, uh, this actually went public, became a large impact event. Uh, you've probably heard of the Paige Thompson hack. Uh, this was a Capital One uh, hack, hack where the hacker Paige Thompson gained access to 100 million applications and accounts. And uh, the fine Capital One had to pay was $80 million. Now on the right side, this actually happened earlier this year in July of 2020. Uh, a hacker found an SSRF vulnerability in facebook.com and got $31,500 as a bug bounty. So we're seeing these scenarios pop up quite often with SSRF where, or with really any vulnerability where uh, either it's undetected and you're paying a fine or it's detected and you're paying a, a smaller bug bounty or several smaller bug bounties. And this was also seen, I think, in Starbucks earlier this year in a bug bounty. So this is happening fairly frequently. So this is what the Kudu environment looks like from the administration viewpoint. And as you can see, um, they have a lot of information that they can access, including 
app settings, connections, strings, environment variables, runtime versions. We can basically see the entire file structure, all the code. Um, and this data, you, you know, they could actually change the source code using this data. So it's pretty important here to protect this information um, and protect access to this information. And so let's see how the SSRF attack actually works. So the first consequence of not having those access controls set, as I'd mentioned earlier, um, where they weren't checking authentication or authorization, moving from that um, application node to the manager node. So the first consequence was that they're able to take over the app service in Azure and actually get the virtual file system um, from the API via a get call. So if you look on the left here is a request and on the right is a response. And um, you can see that they redirected into an internal resource. So 172.16, you can see here, that's the internal resource. And so what they're effectively doing is if they were to try to run a get call directly to the server, they would get denied. But because they're uh, using, they're tricking the server into thinking, okay, 172.16 is asking for this, that's okay, let's let it succeed. As you see here on the right, a 200 okay, it went through and it, and it worked. So they were able to get in through the server side request for your SSRF attack. Now, the second consequence is they're actually able to run remote code execution capabilities by doing a post call through that API again. So now, not only are they, they've now tested that it worked that path that, you know, the server is being tricked by that proxy. So now they actually use um, Etsy password, and then they get a list of all of the accounts on the system, including like the root, the default accounts. And so you can see here, all of these accounts after the 200, okay, yes, it went through, but now they're seeing all of those accounts as well. And like, if this person was authenticated via root and they're using like SC shadow, they could have gotten all the password hashes, which then could let you see everything and really, you know, alter the data and everything. So this is a really uh, big concern, especially if you have proprietary data on the system. And even in this situation, they're seeing all the files on your operating system. So without even having root access. So, uh, you know, if you think about what you might store and maybe you have some uh, proprietary data for customers in this situation, maybe there wasn't anything of high interest, but um, just the fact that this could be done using Azure, um, a very, very highly used uh, my, uh, backend cloud provider, that, that's a really big issue. So uh, Microsoft did go ahead and fix this, but um, you know, if they hadn't caught it and who knows how long it's been in here. So what is SSRF? I alluded to this earlier. You try to make that request directly and it'll get denied because of a firewall or you don't have access or whatever other reason. You try to make the, um, the request where you're tricking the server to be a proxy, um, any way that you can trick that server and have kind of like a middle man, um, then you actually can get the data from the server. Um, and this could be a problem as I mentioned earlier. And so how does the attacker actually take advantage of this? So there are several different ways. And the problem is that there are so many different ways that you might not notice or might not be able to cover all of your bases here. So one way would be, let's say your app has a way to set up integrations, like you want to set up Slack integrations or some other kind of integration. Um, you know, that allows the user to input some URL. That URL could be replaced with um, an internal resource or some other URL. Um, anywhere um, on a URL, sometimes you'll see a tag where it'll say like an ID or something like that. If you replace that with a, a new URL or an internal internal resource, um, any opportunity where you can trick the server. And, you know, this isn't as easy to notice as you might expect. Um, you know, clearly Microsoft, they didn't catch it the first time. But it was good that they were able to pay out the bug bounty and catch it in that situation. But um, who knows what other instances could have existed. And so um, what this really tells us is that, well, of course, it's important to add access controls to any cloud microservice uh, functions or, or tools, but and to apply the correct authentication authorization checks 
to, even to the API calls within the system. But it's also really important here to employ a continuous automated full stack security program because this will constantly scan things. And you know, in the example before of how you can actually create that vulnerability um, in your app that would open the door to SSRF. I mean, there are so many ways that hackers are trying every day to uh, attack your server. And so they might write a script that's running as we speak right now, trying all kinds of different permutations of things that they're hoping might lead to that 200 okay response, right? So um, this can actually be fixed. And let's talk about how, um, how a full stack program can help in this situation. So I'll talk about Data Theorem's products and API Secure. And so this is um, our depiction of a full stack. So as you can see, the front end, the client end is mobile or web. Uh, we support iOS and Android. Web is single page apps. And then there's oftentimes hundreds of APIs in the back end pushing data and pulling data um, to and from the cloud. Um, you might use microservices, you might use storage buckets or databases in the cloud. And so uh, this is how we kind of see that modern software architecture and modern stack. And um, so what we're trying to do is uh, with our product, especially the API secure product, uh, we have a analyzer engine and it has uh, three different stages to it that are running continuously. So we have discovery, exposure, and remediation. And um, during the discovery phase, this product will begin with an inventory of all of your existing APIs, whether they be public or API domains or SPAs, cloud assets, and we'll even check private APIs and will identify any of your existing cloud building blocks like queues or containers, cloud storages, and once we do that, we can identify any potential vulnerabilities or shadow assets that uh, you're unaware of that could be potential to attacks or data leaks. And uh, during expose or inspect, uh, we'll actually uncover that for you and show you how what you can do, how you can fix these vulnerabilities. We actually also have attack toolkits and I'll be talking about our SSRF attack toolkit um, some of the other attack toolkits that we have include Hack and Extract, where we try authentication and authorization hacking attacks, um, things like Detect and Inject, that's another hacking toolkit we have, which is more to emulate things like SQL injection. Um, and so basically, you'll set your priorities for your project and we'll check them for you and we'll do this on a continuous basis. And during remediation, we'll also check all of these assets and tell you what you can do to fix them. And in some cases, we actually help you auto remediate. You just press one button and you'll be able to auto remediate. 